people are attentive to the needs of our neighbor because it's very difficult to be a solitary figure up here in the North Country. We depend on one another, and that's a real gift. To be a member of the body of Christ means that when one member suffers, we all suffer. When one hurts, we all hurt. And when one celebrates, we all celebrate. And so we will celebrate 150 years of being a family of faith, led by a, a shepherd, by a, a bishop. I'm number 14. So it's a time to really recollect, to give thanks, and to look forward. We've been gifted with a tremendous heritage of faith, and so I really see it as an important responsibility that I have to see that that faith is handed on with all its vigor as best I can. And certainly with the campaign, the resources that we're able to garner from that will be extremely important as we move forward to see that the programs and the infrastructure and all the other kinds of supports that we need to, to keep ours a vibrant church. And so that's why the campaign is, is timely and, and, and so necessary. It's our church. And it's our future. This year, the Diocese of Ogdensburg begins a capital campaign to raise $16 million by our 150th anniversary in 2022. This money will positively impact our parishes and cathedral, our seminarians and retired priests, and our children and families. 75% of all funds will stay in our local parishes where they're raised, and 25% will be used to address our shared needs as parishes. We need to move. And I have great confidence in my pastors and parish leadership and in our parishioners to, to see that we're able to make this campaign really an opportunity to provide our parishes with the resources that they need to support a vibrant, vigorous parish family. The lights need to be repaired. As you, you might see in the choir loft, some of our lights aren't on. That's the panel that's missing right now. So that choir loft is quite dark. We need new front steps on the church. Part of the roof of our church, half of it has to be replaced in the near future. I would first of all say that not only 75% is coming back to the parish, but all of it's coming back to the parish. Yes, 75% of that will end up in the parish's pocketbook, if you will. But the other 25%, it doesn't just disappear into the diocese. That's not going into a big bank account. I think we need to be aware of that. The bishop's going to take his 25% and share it with us in other ways. It's our church. It's our future. $450,000 is planned for upgrades and improvements to our Camp Guggenheim, including renovation of the dorms, updating kitchen and dining areas, and improvements to the access road. Camp Guggenheim, which was donated by Mr. Guggenheim of Guggenheim Museum fame, to have some place where kids can go to celebrate summer, have fun in summer, and yet at the same time have fun within their faith. It was kind of a new experience for me because I had never really um, shared my faith with kids my age, and I thought that was really awesome, and I just felt so comfortable, and it was just great. We're creating a sense from these young men and women, a confidence, a love of faith, and understanding where faith fits in. I think that's what Guggenheim has been for me. After you get back from camp, you just want to share it with everybody, but yep. no words can actually describe what, mm -hmm. the experience. Camp Guggenheim is also host to Family Guggenheim, offering our families the opportunity to share a unique faith-based family camping experience. It's our church. And it's our future. One million dollars will be earmarked for our seminarians to help meet the costs of developing and educating our future priests. It is not an easy thing to be at seminary. Uh, there's a lot of work and financially it can be straining and, and the people of this diocese who shoulder that burden financially uh, are doing us a great service. My faith is very important to me and to our family and we want it to continue. And so we have to do as parishioners whatever it takes to ensure that our church is going to be alive and vibrant and, and there for us. It's impossible for me to be able to get a job and to make that kind of money and to be able to support myself. And so I'd like to say thank you so much. I really wouldn't be able to do this without it. It's our church. It's our future. One million dollars will aid in the preservation and maintenance of our cathedral. Come and see your cathedral because it is your diocesan cathedral. I think it's in the center of all of our hearts. It's really such a a wonderful place where so many powerful sacred moments have happened in, in the life of this diocese. 
Over the course of years, the mortar degrades exteriorly so moisture gets in and then it has no way to get back out. And so it works its way in through the stone, degrading the face of the interior stone. If we don't address the cause of the moisture, the interior stones will continue to crumble. We're in the choir loft at the cathedral and uh, again, uh, the, the major difficulty is in the northern tower. Uh, a lot of the pipes for the uh, pipe organ were put into the northern tower in order to keep the visual of the Assumption of Mary, the stained glass window, available and free for people to appreciate. So of course, over the course of years, as the stone has degraded and as moisture has gotten in, there's been great damage to different parts of the uh, pipe organ itself. I really hope that whatever we can do to help maintain it and upkeep it is taken very seriously because the beautiful cathedral that we're so lucky to have, we want to make sure we keep having for our children to see. It's our church. It's our future. One million dollars will assist our priests who have served our diocese for a lifetime with medical costs not covered by insurance. And I just think to myself, these men have given their lives, and in many senses we call them father, but now they're our grandfathers and great-grandfathers, and so how do we really uh, have a great love and respect for the retired priests? And so certainly the funding is, uh, is critical. Well, as a retired priest, our precious ability is the celebration of Mass. And so I help with Masses. When a priest needs coverage, I often go to another parish for a weekend to help in that regard too. I see Mass uh, six days a week. On Saturdays, I uh, join here with the priest on celebrating the uh, anticipated Sunday Mass, and I hear confessions at that time. And their desire is to continue on. There was a priest who went into his 90s, was up in a little place up in Cherubusco. He was going to stay there until the Lord called him home, and he did. You know? and, you know, and, and people loved him for it because they realized that his presence made it possible for them to be open. Going into a vocation like that, I'm sure they're always thinking, I went into this and God said he'd take care of me. So I think that we're like the hands and feet and the instruments by which God mm -hmm. is going to take care of them. It's our church, it's our future. $1.3 million will be directed to our 2018 Bishop's Fund Appeal. Our Bishop's Fund Appeal helps the people of the North Country. All the money we raise for our Bishop's Fund stays right here in the North Country. If we as a parish had to try to support all these individual programs that the Bishop's Fund supports, we couldn't do it. We can't raise that sort of money. There's never going to be that much. We, as the Diocese of Augsburg, come together to support it so that, that in turn, those funds come back to support what parish programs are being done. As you consider your four-year financial pledge to our capital campaign, imagine how many lives in our church this campaign will affect and for how many years into our future. The money is important for sure, but it's more important about providing for the future. If we want to have vibrant parishes, then we need the resources. One thing I've found, no matter where I've been, people are extraordinarily generous and they love their church, they love their faith, and if they can help, they will help. So I think showing them the different needs, not only in their own parishes, their own backyards, but also diocesan-wide needs, such as care for our retired priests and education of future priests just to serve our faithful, assisting with the care for our youth centers, uh, Guggenheim particularly, and their cathedral church. I think they'll see the need and they'll respond in a great fashion. It's our church. It's our future. It's our future. I'm proud of the Church of the North Country, of the lives that we've touched through the grace of God. People continue to be nourished by the sacraments, that they hear God's word, and that the people continue to extend a helping hand to those who need it. I'm really counting on the person in the pew to come through with this capital campaign. The need is great. The parishioner is generous and faithful. And so I rely on God to touch the hearts of the folks so that when the campaign gets underway, that they say, yes, the time is right. Yes, it is our church. It is our faith. It's our future. And I want to be a part of it. It's, it's our, our church. church. It's, it's our, our future. future.